Upon starting Clarity, you'll be presented with the main operating window and the Load Show dialog box. To start a new show, simply close this box. Our first stage is to patch some fixtures, and the first fixture we're going to patch is a Clay Packy stage scan. So we scroll down through the list until we find Clay Packy, click to open the list of fixtures, find the stage scan unit, and select one of the modes available, in this case the lamp control mode. Simply click and drag this to drag it across onto the patch window, select the DMX starting address, and release. Select the number of fixtures you wish to operate, and press the patch button. Next up I'm going to select some Martin Mac 300 units running in mode 4. So I select Martin, Mac 300, and mode 4. This time I'm going to double click to bring up the same dialog box and use my computer keyboard to enter the information. The final stage is to now connect this DMX Universe A to some DMX hardware, either one of the LSC, QX, uh, or VX nodes or wings, or via ArtNet. In this case, Universe Z1 on subnet 0. I have now finished patching. Having successfully patched my fixtures, I can now switch to the programmer window to control them. Clarity creates automatic groups of the patch fixture types. To control all my stage cans, I simply click on this group, and then I can either control them directly on the attribute widgets located at the top of the screen, or more intuitively in the universal control panel at the bottom of the screen. Select my Mac 400s by clicking on that group and the universal control panel ensures that these fixtures operate in exactly the same manner as any other type of fixture. If you wish to select subgroups or fixtures inside the groups you can use the selector tabs on the side here to access more direct features such as odd fixtures, even fixtures, all, as well as individual fixtures by simply clicking, clicking and dragging to select a range of fixtures, or holding down the control key to select fixtures in a non-logical order. To record this look on stage for later playback, press the record button, and by accepting all the default values, we will record the first queue in a new queue list. To clear the editor, press the clear button, and we're now ready to commence our next queue. One of the powerful features of the Clarity programming window is the fan engine. Any attribute of any light can be fanned simply by clicking and holding the control key on the computer keyboard. By selecting the top of the fan widget, we get the ability to do a center fan. By clicking at the center, we can do a center fan. or by clicking and dragging the center offset to the side, we can do a left to right or right to left fan. To save this as the next queue in our queue list, simply press the append last button. The fan functions work both in the attribute widgets at the top of the screen, as well as in the universal control panel at the bottom of the screen. So simply pressing and holding the control key enables me to fan the color or fan the positions. I can even fan things like the dimmers. Again, append last, we'll record that as the next queue in my list. I'm just going to add a couple more queues now. If at any time I wish to undo or redo moves, this is available via the undo and the redo command. There are unlimited levels of undo and redo. 
and by selecting the drop down toolbox and the show undo view I can have a complete list that allows me to jump backwards and forwards to any particular period of time during my programming session. Now that we've recorded our list of cues, it is time to play them back. We'll switch to the control booth window. Select the cue list. And hit the go button and our first cue phase to the stage. Each subsequent press of the go button triggers the following cue. The intensity override fader can be used to fade the level of the fixtures up and down and the manual inhibit master can be used to fade naturally backwards and forwards between the two cues. The jump buttons can instantly jump forwards and backwards through steps. Full details on what is contained in each queue can be discovered by simply clicking on any step in the queue and the information is displayed in the right hand window. Selecting a queue here and hitting the jump button jumps directly to that cue in the show. Hitting the go button fades out into my last blackout cue. The control booth window also allows us to make temporary or permanent changes to the operational mode of the cue list. In this case I'm going to change the cue list from a cue list to a chase by simply selecting the chase direction and clicking on the go button. I can adjust the speed and the crossfade ability, whether it snaps or crossfades between steps. Switching the chase function off turns it back into a standard cue list. I can then change the mode from tracking to tracking with no jumps or to cue only. I also have options to control the way that it interfaces with faders and the default settings for that cue list. I can also drag the cue list to the bottom part of the window and play it from there. In this mode, each of the playbacks is mapped to the function buttons on the computer keyboard so that pressing the F1 key in this case steps through that cue list. Finally the levels window enables me to see the output of the console and what is happening live. I can view in percentage view, in decimal view, as well as see the output as values or as the source of where it's been driven from. By clicking the new button, I can open up a new view window so that I can see the views in multiple formats. If an LSC Clarity VX wing is attached to the computer, it will appear in the drop down wings list. Once selected, a virtual copy of the wing appears on the desktop. This can be resized and moved to a convenient location. To assign a cue list to the wing for playback, simply click and drag the cue list onto the LCD screen. To play the cue list, Press the play button on the virtual wing or on the real wing hardware. The wings interact with the standard QList playback in the Clarity software, so you have multiple points of control. Once assigned, 
All the details of the wing and assigned playbacks are saved with the standard show file.